Hello, 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 and welcome to Courageously Kind. I'm Maddie. And I'm Liz. And today we are talking about kindness, but not in the conventional... Conventional? Conventional? Conventional, yeah. <laughs> not in the, the typical, here's how you can be kind, but rather, what do we do when we're feeling unkind? Because we all feel unkind. And you know, moments of our day, we all feel, you know, not a kind and warm and loving person. But what do we do when we acknowledge that we're feeling that way and how do we fix it? Yeah. So, like Liz said, we're all humans and we make mistakes. And sometimes we look back at our lives and we think, oh, wow, that was not kind. You know, why did I do that? Why did I react to that? I think the first step into correcting unkind behaviors, I guess I'll say, is reflection. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can get caught in the cycle of, I did something unkind, and then we try and reflect, and we just get mad at ourselves, and then we take that anger out on somebody else, and the cycle repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So how do we break it? I think being aware. Mm. Not to say that you should be like so self-aware that it's painful because that can totally happen That's too. That's damaging. <laughs> That's damaging as well. But I've found myself, the more I learn about kindness, and the more I learn about how to use kindness in my life, the more instances where I'm unkind and then I take a step back and go, whoa, why did I do that? Yeah. Because here's the thing. Most of the time, when I'm unkind to someone, or I do something that's unkind, it's because there's something going on in my life that I'm not properly dealing with. Mm. Stress, anxiety is the biggest one. Worry, fear, you know, being overwhelmed. All of those things, if not properly dealt with, if sort of pushed to the back burner, are going to boil over. Hmm. And I'm going to end up reacting at someone else and not properly dealing with what I have to deal with. Yeah, and and getting caught in that cycle. Yeah. So how do we fix this? It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Mm -hmm. But I was reading, have you got to the the part of deep kindness when I talk about emotional regulation? Yeah. I'm reading this book called Deep Kindness. We both are reading mm. Deep Kindness. And if you are interested in the, in how to really become a more kind person, please get this book. It's so helpful. It's so eye-opening. Definitely. So I, I'm reading about emotional regulation, and they say to sit with your emotions without any opinions yeah. about them. Sit, you know, go somewhere quiet and just sit there, especially when you're feeling like you're about to kind of bubble over. Go find a quiet spot, sit, and just say to yourself, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling angry. And But try not to, you know, flood your head with, well, why? And what did I do? And, what's the, and how do I fix it? Just try to observe. And a good way to do this, and it sounds silly, but try and do it with everyday life. Yeah. Driving down the road, I see a tree. I, you know, I'm holding a book. I, you know, I get into that thought process. And so then our emotions, we become less attached to those negative emotions. And we can just observe and see them and acknowledge them. Because we're not supposed to react to every emotion that pops up in our lives. So by doing this, by sitting with our emotions, by observing, and by, I don't want to say detaching because I don't really like that word. Yeah, because our emotions are valid and important and they can help us learn. Right. But taking away the good or bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling sad and that's bad. Or I'm feeling upset and that's bad. Stop using that language. 
because then we're just going to stress about, oh my God, it's bad. Like I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling upset and I'm feeling bad and that's a bad thing. Take away that attachment to it. You don't have to, you don't have to attach yourselves to your emotions and you don't have to react to everything that comes up. So, kind of the next step, after you observe your emotions, you have to take accountability for them. Don't say, oh, yeah, I'm feeling this, but I'm going to bottle it up and put it on the shelf and not look at it and not acknowledge that it's there. We have to take accountability and say, okay, I am feeling upset. And recognize that even though you're feeling this way, you don't have to penetrate it onto other people. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that's really helpful for me is I communicate to the people around me, my family, what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking accountability. I'm feeling stressed out because I procrastinated and I have a lot of homework to do. And I'm mad that I put it off for this long. That sort of just gives them maybe some understanding of yeah. where I'm coming from. Right. And it makes me more aware of how I talk to the people around me. Yeah, it raises your own awareness to how you interact with others. Definitely. So many times I interact with people, specifically the people that are in such close proximity to me, but I interact with them in a way that might be less than kind because because I have things that I need to... You know what I mean? I'm right. projecting my own anxieties and frustrations with myself onto other people. And the first step, like we keep saying this over and over, but the first step to, to unlearning that habit is to acknowledge that you're doing it in the first place. Yeah. And then once you acknowledge that that you're being unkind and that you're being right. unkind because of frustrations with right. yourself, you're being unkind to yourself so mm. you be unkind to others, then you take accountability. And then you can learn from it. Absolutely. And with accountability comes vulnerability. You and know? that's scary. That's scary and I think that's why we don't take accountability. Because mm. we don't want to be vulnerable. Because we think that if we fess up to a mistake, that people are going to look at us differently. Mm -hmm. And we fear that. You know, it comes down to how people perceive us. Yeah. And that is so fragile Mm -hmm. to a lot of people. But without vulnerability, you can't be accountable. And then you can't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And then you can't learn how to be unkind. And then you can't be a kinder, a better person. Right. So we wanted to talk about this today because we feel it's so important to not, you know, sugarcoat or we don't want to present ourselves as always kind. Right. We're not always kind. Right. None of us are. And I have felt some pressure, you know, since since doing this podcast and since, you know, saying that we're going to spend so much time and energy talking about courage and kindness. I felt a lot of pressure to be perfect. Yeah. And to always be kind. And always being kind is not a bad thing. No. But I have noticed that I get even more frustrated with myself when mm. I fall short. And it's that cycle. Yeah. That unkindness cycle. Yeah. So we thought it was so important to share with you that it's totally normal and okay to not feel kind every moment of every day. Mm-hmm. What we do have to work on we collectively have to work on is learning from that unkindness and you know kindness is a practice I don't know if I said this in this episode yet but kindness is a practice and when we fall short and trip and fall we gotta get back up we gotta say okay I'm gonna keep going and that alone is a It's going to help. It's a powerful step. Yeah. Yeah. So when you feel unkind at some point throughout your week, listen to this episode again. Know that there are people out there that understand. And we're just here to help you 
keep going. There's no judgment here. No. And we encourage you not to judge yourself. You know, Be kind to yourself. Yes. Because that's where, that's where unkindness starts is within yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you can show kindness to yourself, then you can begin to show kindness to others too. Yeah. That's all we got for you this week. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful week. Stay healthy, stay safe. Wear your mask, please. Wash (laughs) your hands. Stay home when you can. We love you. We're proud of you. So proud. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others. And we'll see you back here real soon.